Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Well, friends, today is... February the 13th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now today I would like to talk to you about a passage that comes out of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 14. So if you have your Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and let's pick up at verse 13. Now it says, consider, think on the work of God, for who can make straight which he has made crooked? In other words, who can change the plans of God? And what this is saying is that the course of our lives has been planned out by the Almighty, and there's nothing that we can do to change those plans. And every one of those plans, both good and bad, or what would appear to be bad to us, which ultimately will result in good, but every one of those plans serves a specific purpose in our lives. And we know that to be true because we can look back at certain events in our lives and where they appeared to be so bad at that time, we know that they have made us into the men and women of God that we are today. And without those events... We wouldn't be who we are. And that's what it means to be at peace with God because we understand that God is in perfect control and all we need do is trust him through the circumstances. Now notice in verse 14, it says, In the day of prosperity, be joyful. When everything in your life is good and well, be joyful. Celebrate the goodness of God. But in the day of adversity, consider. Now that word consider means to give attention to, to discern. And so in the day of prosperity, we are to be joyful, but when the hard times come, we are to consider the hand of God in the matter and what it is that God is trying to teach us. So we're not to ask the question, why is this happening? But the question is to be, Lord, what are you trying to show me through this circumstance? Do you remember in Matthew chapter 7, beginning at 24, Jesus said, Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And obviously, we all want to be wise men in the house of the Lord. And the rock would be a solid foundation, and that solid foundation would be truth. Well, Jesus continues in verse 25, and he says, The rains of life descend, the floods come, the winds blow, and they beat upon that house, or they beat upon that person. The circumstances of life beat against that person, because they are in the day of adversity. But that person does not fall because he was founded upon a rock. He was founded upon truth. All of his confidence, all of his hope is in the God whom he serves. But then Jesus says in verse 26, everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man. And of course, none of us want to be fools in the house of the Lord. And he says, they have built their house upon the sand. They have not established themselves in God or the things of God. They've established themselves in the things that this world offers them. And when those things go away, they are on sinking sand. And it says the rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, the day of adversity came upon that person, they beat upon that person, and he fell. And not only did he fall, but great was his fall. And that's why it's so important in the day of prosperity that we spend much time in the word of God, training ourselves in the things of God so that we store them up there in us 
And when the day of adversity comes, that's what we draw upon. Just like many are setting aside food today for dark days that may be coming in the future, so we are to set up spiritual food. And we are to store this spiritual food away in spiritual storehouses in our hearts, our souls, our minds, so that when the day of adversity comes, we can draw upon those resources. That's why James says in chapter 1, beginning at verse 2, he says, Brothers, count it all joy when you fall into different divinely sent trials or temptations. And these would be the trials of life. And know this, that the trying of your faith, the issues of this life that weigh you down, they work patience or endurance. You learn how to endure through the difficult times, waiting upon the hand of God to bring the day of prosperity back once again. And he says, if patience has her perfect work in you, you're patiently waiting upon God, you will be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Now, if any of you lack wisdom regarding this matter, let him ask of God the Father, because he gives this wisdom to all men liberally. But make sure you ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's what Proverbs tells us in chapter 24, verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, when troubled times come and you begin to feel sorry for yourself, you begin to question God, your hallelujah is not as strong as it was in the day of prosperity. Well, this will show you that your strength is small. In other words, Solomon is saying your faith is small. You see, in the day of prosperity, it's easy to have faith because everything is going well. But true faith is shown. How strong our relationship with God truly is, is shown in the day of adversity. And I felt like the Lord wanted me to share that with you this morning, friends, because we all are going to, without a doubt, face dark, cold, and lonely days. And we're going to need this as a reminder so we don't ask the question, why are you doing this to me? Why are you allowing this to happen? But we ask the more important question, what is it you want me to learn from this trial? How can I be a better man or woman of God when I come out of this trial than I am at this moment? And friends, if you can do this, great will be the things that you will learn and that God will do in your life in the day of adversity, through your trial, through your time of suffering. Because as Romans chapter 5 tells us, we glory in tribulations. We look forward to tribulations. We look forward to suffering. There's not many of us that can truly say that, friends. But we look forward to suffering because we know in the suffering, patience will be manifested. And from patience will come experience. And from experience will come hope. Hope in the God that we serve that he is truly in control of all things, even in this difficult time that we're going through. And because of that, hope will not make ashamed because the love of God will be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who has been given unto us. And so I don't know if you're going through a time of suffering and hardship right now. I don't know if that lies ahead in your future, in the days, the weeks, the months, or the years to come. But I want to encourage you to put this in your heart, to store it away, as Jesus said, for a rainy day. Because surely, friends, the rain is coming, the winds are coming, the floods are coming. The question is, will you groan in that day? Will you murmur against God? Or will you consider in that day? Will you be discerning? 
And will you look for the hand of God that will surely be working in and through that situation? Certainly, friends, there is much that we should consider. Well, I'm so thankful again that you're with us. I pray that the word of God is having its effect in your life, that it is changing you into a true man and woman of God, following after the principles of the Bible, and that your relationship with him is being deeply rooted so that nothing can move you, for you are founded on the rock. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I love you. I'm so grateful again that you're with us. Now, I pray that your journey will be blessed today. I pray that your eyes will be enlightened and your heart will be touched by his Holy Spirit. Now, as he wills and until next time, I truly love you, friends. I'll see you on the next video.